Good morning, boys and girls. Let's start with our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Dear God, please help all the sick people get well. Please help all the children who don't have a family. And please help me do the best that I can to be like Jesus. And may we all see each other again really soon. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, let's do the calendar. If yesterday was Wednesday, today is? That's right, Thursday. If today's Thursday, tomorrow will be? That's right, Friday. If yesterday was May 20th, today is? Right, May 21st. Right, the cardinal number is 21, but when we say it as an ordinal number, we say 21st. And that's two groups of 10 and one more. Okay, repeat after me. Today is Thursday, May 21st, 2020. En español, hoy es el jueves 21 de mayo 2020. Although many people say 2020, so we could say 2020. But we've been saying dos mil viente, so we'll go with that. And today is our 159th day of learning. Wow, that's a lot of learning. All right, let's keep it going then. So, today we're going to do a new consonant letter. I'll bring the chart over so you can guess. Now, when you say the name of this letter, it does tell you the sound it makes. So, let's look at the ones we've covered already. This one does give you a clue of the sound it makes when you say its name. It could be J, you're right, because when we say J, we do say J. What else could it be? Could it be Q? No, because that's the shy letter and he needs his friend U. It could be Z, because we do say Z when we do that. Why? No, because Y doesn't say W. We know W says W, right? X. It could be X, but it's not. So that only leaves us V. V, the letter V. Okay, let's talk about how we make that sound, V. The name is V. The sound it makes is V, V, V. Can you do that? V, V. What's happening? Right, your top teeth are kind of vibrating, there's a V word, vibrating on your bottom lip. Some people get the F and the V confused. F we push out hard, we push with our teeth, we go right? But V, we kind of it's vibrating, almost like you're shivering. Okay, how do we make a V? What strokes do we need? Right, slants, similar to the W. It's making a V is like making a half a W. So we're going to start at the skyline for uppercase and slant to the ground. Now you could slant back up or you could slant down. Okay, so you could slant down. But you want to make sure it's a slant back up. Lowercase looks just like it, except it's a plain line letter starting at the plain line. Slant to the ground line and slant back up. V. Okay, let's put some pictures in our pocket chart for the sound V makes. Okay, see if you can be thinkers and not stinkers. I'll give you clues. This one, I wouldn't even think of saying. But this is an animal and looks very similar to what? Right, the alpaca. And it is a cousin to the alpaca, so that means it's related to the camel as well. And the um, llama. It is called a Vic, Vic Cunha. Vic Cunha. V Vic Cunha. And they are native to South America. That means they normally live in South America. Okay. Okay, do you remember the story Caps for Sale? And the peddler walked through a little town. A little town could be called a V, V, V. Village, good, a village, a little village. Okay, uh, this is a sport, 
Uh, you saw Miss Sweeney play. The teachers played the eighth graders in a game of, right, v, 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 volleyball. Volleyball. Push out the v sound. Okay, uh, when your mom or your dad cleans the, house, the rug, they use a, not a broom, but a v, v, vacuum. Vacuum. I hope you're repeating them so you can feel the v, v, v vibrating on your lip. Okay, uh, Mario and Luigi are a type of what kind of game? You play it off the TV? V, video game. V, video game. So, video. Okay, in the summer, you might go on a trip with your family and you call that a v, 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 vacation. Vacation. This is a big bird. It's not very pretty, but he does have a special job in the food chain. They eat dead animals, so they kind of help clean the earth by cleaning the dead animals up. It's called a <laughs> vulture. A vulture. There's another one. They have a pretty big wingspan. Vulture. So if you ever look up in the sky and you see birds flying around, it's usually vultures because they smell that something has died and they're going to go eat it. This is a type of snake. It's poisonous. V -v Viper. V Viper. And a poisonous snake has poison in it, so it's called v -v venom. Venom. A viper has venom. When we talked about God's gift of earth and the different land forms, I told you the land between two mountains could be called a valley. V -v -v valley. Okay, uh, we celebrated this in class. You all had little bags with bumblebees on them and you exchanged v -v valentines. Valentines. How, how far up can I go? Okay. Ooh, hey, Mr. Vulture, get over there. Okay, uh, this is a type of flower, and it's a color. It's in the purple family. <laughs> Violet. Violet. This is a type of <laughs> vehicle that can fit many people. A uh, van. A uh, van. Your mom might drive a mini van. Uh, this is something that we use to hold flowers in. If you bring flowers in from outside and put them in your house. V vase. Some people say vase. Some people say vase. But it still begins with a V. V -v vase. Ah, and Sweeney's wearing one just for today. Vest. Good. A v -v -v vest. Vest. Ah, this, there's a lot of them in Hawaii, and they erupt, and they make lavas, lava comes out, they're very hot. V, 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 volcano, volcano. Uh, grapes grow on these. It's a type of plant that, like, spreads really quickly, a lot of branches. Uh, vine, v, vine. This is an instrument. Mm -hmm. Violin. V violin. Can you see those? Okay, good. Uh, the other day we talked about fruit and v v vegetables. Vegetables. V vegetables. And I have two names. A girl's name that is short for Valentina or Valerie could be Val, Val. And a boy's name who is short for Vincent could be Vin, Vin. All right, repeat after me, ready? Village, Valentine, 
volleyball, vacuum, video, vin vicuña, vulture, vin, val, vest, village, vacation, viper, violet, volcano, vine, vegetable, van, vase, or vase, vest, and violin. Okay, now we're going to hear one of my favorite stories. It's called Verdi. Verdi. Glasses don't fit so good. Verdi. And it's about a snake. He's not a viper, but his name begins with V. Verdi. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green. As green as the tree leaves, she called to her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Verdi dwaddled. That means he kind of lingered behind. He lagged behind. He was proudly eyeing his yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. So Verdi ventured into the treetops to look for them. So when they come out of the egg and they're young, they're called hatchlings. And when the python is young, a baby like that, they're yellow. And the mothers that grow up to be big and green. So as they get older, their color will change. But Verdi doesn't understand the hurry in growing up to be big and green. <clears throat> Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verdi looked at their droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare, said Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taken nearly four weeks for that lizard to digest. I surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you, asked Verdi. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me, whined Aggie, if I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi tapped a tune with his tail as he waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them. And he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes and his yellow color. Hoping to find snakes that weren't too boring, Verdi slipped away. So he went and talked to the older snakes. And all they seemed to do was complain. And he's like, why grow up? Why be in a hurry to grow up? Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? Oh, I'm too tired, Dozer groaned. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. That means he was disappointed. Greens were not only lazy and boring, but they were rude. So Verdi, the young snake, refers to the older snakes as greens because their bodies will turn green when he gets older. And he doesn't seem like he wants to be like them. <clears throat> At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and the other with his snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring, or green, he thought. I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. And then Verdi let go. You see what he's doing? What do you think is going to happen? Let's see. And he went soaring through the air. 
So he kind of pulled himself back like a slingshot and went whoop. From a distance, the Greens watched. Oh my, they said. Ribbon shook his head. <coughs> At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first shed. You know how our snake at school sheds its skin? Should have brought him home just for this. I could have had him around my neck. Oh. Aggie nodded. He's likely to put an eye out on a branch. Umbles moaned. He may not live to turn green. So these older snakes are saying, oh boy, he's not even going to make it to his first shed. He might not make it till he turns green. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. Ah! He gasped. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle, and I'm still turning green? He raced down to the river, grabbing a mouthful of rough leaves. What do you think he's going to do at the river with those leaves in his mouth? Eat them? He sees his skin is starting to turn green, and he doesn't want to grow up to be boring and lazy like those green snakes. Verdi flung himself into the water. If I can run off the, if I can't run this green off, I'll scrub it off, he said. He's trying to wash the green coming in, in his skin off. You think it'll work? His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bottom feeder cruising like like <clears throat> cruising the murky depth yum the old fish thought lunch see that big fish he sees verdi moving up and splash and he might go up and eat him before the fish could haul verdi under the frightened snake bit him on the nose a poo with a blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish knees, sending Verdi into the air. Slapping onto a so the soggy shore, Verdi skidded out of reach. So he bit his nose, and he got sent flying through the air. <clears throat> Whew, that was close, he said. Every inch of Verdi's body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown, but it sure beats being green. So he left the mud on. He doesn't want to accept the fact that he is growing older and turning green because he's afraid he's going to be boring and lazy, and cranky. But the soft brown muck dried into a hard gray shell, and Verdi could barely move. If, if he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As each peach flew away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than it was before. This is terrible, said Verdi. He pictured himself hanging around, drooping loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like those old, boring green snakes. He looked up to, to the sky, where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the tree. Vine has a v. He, and he launched himself from the treetop and Verdi startled, he scared, a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight. Sure, the bright sun and his soft, lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot that he would eventually fall back to the ground. He's trying to fling himself close to the sun so he can be yellow. But he forgot. What goes up must come down. Whippity, whappity, flippity, flappity, wham! Plummeting through the trees, Verdi landed in a crooked 
sprawl across a log in the forest. He couldn't move. Help! Help! He croaked. Oh, he's hurt. As usual, the Greens had been watching Verdi's antics. They moved quickly where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this? Umble said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed. Oh. Luckily, he still has two eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. They might be lazy and cranky and complainers, but they're helpful and caring. Neatly, they splinted to a branch. Birdie. Neatly splinted to a branch. Splinted means they kind of like wrapped him so he wouldn't fall off. Verdi had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the forest floor, Ribbon asked. Quick as lightning, answered Aggie. And I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller than you, you know. The things I dared to run down and swallow, Umbles bragged. Wild boar, they were no match for me. Verdi was surprised to hear this. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Ribbon crashed, just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put my eye out. Then old Gumbles here, he nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life. It's safer. A warm perch and a little sunshine and an occasional good meal. That's all we need. The Greens rambled on about their old glory days when they were young and yellow. And Verdi settled down on the branch and listened. See, Verdi, they strapped him to the branch so he wouldn't fall off. And now they're telling stories about how all the things they used to do. But then they realized they were, could really get hurt. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, Looks like you're ready to go again. And he carefully untied Verdi from the branch. You are welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Ribbon agreed. The three greens slipped quietly back into the forest. Verdi wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure he wanted to go. So he just stretched and stayed put until the sun went down and he listened to the night forest come alive. See, that was nice. They invited him along with them. Okay, and night fell. The night creatures came out. Time passed. The sun and the moon took turns in the sky. So Verdi's there for a while. Verdi marveled as the full moon grew thinner and thinner each night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew round again. He wondered why he'd never noticed it before. Sometimes you have to stop and look around to notice things, right? And Verdi never really did that. Verdi became so green that he blended in perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that the other creatures walked right by him without even seeing him. Can you see him? See, he's turned green. He's been there many, many nights now. He's watched the moon go from full to small to full again. And in the process, he's getting older, so he's turning greener. One fine morning, as Verdi basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached him. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of this green old guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other one laughed. I seriously don't. They're just like I used to be, thought Verdi. And now, and I'm now what I was afraid to be. 
They looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me? Verdi asked. With you? The yellow snake said. I'll even show you how to make a figure eight in the air, Verdi replied, though he was a little worried that he could put his eye out. So there's two young yellow hatchling snakes like Verdi used to be, and now they're looking at him and thinking the same things Verdi was thinking about the other green snakes. But Verdi said, do you guys want to come and climb with me? I'll teach you how to make a figure eight. And they're thinking, you can't do that, you're old. With practice, the three snakes performed a perfect triple figure eight, leaping and looping with his little striped friends. Verdi laughed. I may be big and very green, but I'm still me. And there's Verdi, the big one in the middle. But just because he had to get older and turn green, didn't mean he couldn't do the same things he did when he was younger. Which reminds Miss Weenie, you know, I'm pretty old up there in age, but I can still play softball with kids that are like 18 and stuff. So, poor Verdi didn't want to turn green because he was and get older because he was afraid he was going to be lazy and boring and a complainer. But then he realized, well, you can't stop nature from happening, right? We all have to grow older. But that doesn't mean we can't still be ourselves and do the things we like. Now, I didn't give you guys this, but this is a great craft that I made once with one of my classes. You take a paper plate, color one whole side yellow. And then when it dries, turn it over and color the other side green. Then ask your mom or dad to start in the middle and make a swirl, like a spiral, all the way around because then you can have Verdi when he was a young yellow snake. He liked to spring through the air. And then on the other side, you have Verdi when he got older. Okay? So you can ask your mom or dad to help you with that. Okay, so what you're going to do, there are two activities on Seesaw. One is hours, erase and read me the hours that we worked on yesterday, and a letter V word, uh, paper on Seesaw. Okay, so you're going to do this one, the phonics, and penmanship, practice writing Vs. You're going to make a vulture puppet, a big bird, okay, vulture puppet. And Vegetable Man. Vegetable Man comes in two sheets. And actually, even, you know, the other day when we talked about seeds, we know that a tomato is really a fruit. But this guy's called Vegetable Man. Um, so, his head is a tomato. His neck is a beet. His body here is a type of squash. That's a root vegetable. His Feet are potatoes, also a root vegetable. His legs are corn, which is actually green. And then we have celery arms, okay? You don't have to do both if you don't want to, um, but you should do one of them. I know you like doing your crafts, so you don't have to do both. You can do one or both, but you have to do the other pages. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to see you in a little while to learn a new sight word.